like to kick every episode off by going around the table, which is where we talk about something new, fun, and noteworthy about our weeks. Luke, why don't you kick us off? Uh, okay. This week, I have a cold. And so... Yeah, you already hurt. sound terrible. I know. I know. I just, I I you already up. sound terrible. No, I want to feel the punch of energy. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm sick. I'm getting over being sick. Uh, other than that, I am prepping for DMing. I'm hopping back in the DM seat, running the next campaign for our group. So I am prepping, prepping, prepping. So it's all about so- D&D and drawing maps and making NPCs and figuring out how to kill a group of adventurers. Okay, so for those that don't know Dungeons & Dragons beyond the, just the name, yeah. Um, what, what are like, what, give me the, the base level quick responsibilities of a DM. You run... Which means other, Dungeon Master, but yeah. Dungeon Master, you run the other players through the story. That's it. Great. And does this require... This is something I've always been curious about with you specifically. Okay. How elaborate is your storytelling? Because I see these like videos or I see in movies and um, you'll see like there are like props and there's smoke machines and people are like (laughs) crazy voices. Yeah. And but when I think about you, because typically you shy away from doing voices, I just imagine it being like he does voices when he DMs, he does voices. so So that's my question. So when you DM, you are you're into it. Yeah. It's a safe place. It's me and five of my closest friends, and I can be normal, not in front of internet people. It's five of his closest friends, not in front of two guys that he barely knows. And internet people. <laughs> hey, so I, I DM'd. I'm not going to hijack this, but I, I did not DM. I played Dungeons & Dragons yes. for the first time, uh, like playing, playing as a yeah. We went from DM to playing it for the first time. <laughs> That's fine. No, yeah. it's just it's a uh, we Well, I did try to DM it once and gotcha. it was horrible. So you did. It's um, fine. Go ahead. How was it? But but there were there was a fog machine. What? Uh and as the day and the day and nights, like as as the days went on, he would um the, the lights would dim and and come come up nice. as uh, it was nighttime and daytime. Oh, that's fine. Um and he served um Deep? butter beer. Ooh and uh pheasant no he didn't really serve pheasant but um we did have chi- uh, chips <laughs> a i've never had butter beer what? and b you right now you're living up to my expectations so yeah. loot, wow. fog machine yes or no no uh props yes oh there was yes. music too there was music like ambient i music do music playing. i do ambient so you do music. music so i do ambient sound and music those are two different things so i do like town sounds or country sounds depending on where we are in the setting like but then <laughs> and then we went to patrick's house <laughs> <laughs> we stumbled across a hill family reunion <laughs> <laughs> um, wait okay do you do sound effects do you have a soundboard yeah and it's like a dwarf punches someone no no no, no. <laughs> it's just <laughs> ambient noise it's not um, uh. like combat sounds they do have soundboards <laughs> for combat sounds but i don't do that <laughs> That's so good. Okay. Well, I, I want to see you DM one day, so I, I don't know what it's hey, going to take. Someday. You, did you say DM or BM? I just need to be clear. Both are possible. <laughs> what you. you want to watch. Are there do. also sound effects for the other one? Yeah, it, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> um, but yeah, I'm just getting ready for that session or that new campaign. And so that's it. Awesome. All right, you're tossing it to Andrew. Okay, so uh, this week has been super busy, but as you can see, uh, I got a gift. We all got gifts from our friends over at Hero Complex Gallery, or as the shirt says, Hero Complex Galaxy. Did you notice that? Yeah, it's I did the, not notice that. It's a galaxy really? of heroes and complexity. Super good. I got a blue shirt. Um, thanks, Adam. Um, thanks, Tim. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks, Adam. Thanks, Team uh, Thanks, Hero Noah. Complex. This is, shirt is super comfy. It's like really nice and yeah. uh, great. Um, <clears throat> so I got this shirt. I also got uh, some mail um, and have been watching a TV show. Wait, so wait, I'll talk wait, about wait, the mail. Wait, 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 wait. Aunt Patrick, do you know who that guy was that you threw up and did the high the kung fu sounds? Ah, uh, yeah. That's uh, this is uh, yeah, Bruce Willis. Yeah, this is uh, Bruce Lee's brother. 
uh, juice. <laughs> Bruce and juice. <laughs> okay, so here's what's okay. This sticker. Yeah. I had seen it like this upside down, and I always thought it said Noel. And That's I thought it was guy. a Christmas sticker. What yeah. an idiot. And then I had this moment where like I just saw Noel and I was like, oh, that must be like a diehard sticker. And then I flipped it over and realized it's Leon the Professional. Yeah. Uh, that's not Noel or Die Hard. I like yeah. that movie. The Professional. It's a great movie. Yeah, it's good with uh what's her name? Um Hero Complex. Man, Adam's so good. Uh what's what's the, the girl's name? The, the I don't know why I want to call her Matilda, but what's her like actress name? Fratilda. Fratilda. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she was the black swan girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fratilda. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, move on. It's fine. All right, Andrew, go ahead. Sorry. All right. Um, Anakin's lover. So, uh, so I got some mail that I'll talk about later um, during my category. But I've been watching a TV show, um, and I don't know if you guys have seen it before. I absolutely love it. Um, Brooklyn Nine Nine. It's hilarious. It's, this show is about three steps above the irreverency of Veep. Okay. 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 I can't imagine, but go ahead. Right? So you, like, that's that says something. If you've ever watched Veep, you have an idea of what that means. Um, this show has, is not new, but it's new to me. And someone had just recommended it about two or three weeks ago and said, hey, I think you would like this show. Um, it's a show on Showtime called Shameless. I just said that. When? Just now. Oh, you must have. I, it, I've wanted <laughs> to start it for a while. They're like five seasons in, right? They're seven. It's they're, William they're H. Eight, Macy, right? Eight seasons in. Eight yeah, William seasons H. Macy, in, yeah. and seven of them are on Netflix. Yeah. I, I, I've i wanted to start it for a while. It's yeah. it's recommended to me on like basically every movie app I'm on. Well, here's, and, what, here's what it tells. Here's what it says to me. If it's yeah. ever recommended to you, it means that the people or application that's recommending it to you thinks you're a terrible person. Good. Oh. Yeah, because the right. show is, I mean, it's just the most, uh, like I said, irreverent, but like, demor, like immoral. Um, it's it's terrible. But so it's, you love it. But it's incredibly entertaining. Yeah, like the premise is is crazy. So a quick synopsis of the premise: uh, William H Macy plays a dad of six who is a single dad, but he's also a drunk and an addict, um, and. He does the stuff that he does is just like it's so unbelievable that I think is why I think it's why I can watch it because it feels so unbelievable. But what's interesting to me is the characters in the world that he's in, like the the, the world that it creates, um, just accept that he is the way that he is, and they, they does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Um, it it accepts this this hyper real version of reality, which to me feels hyper real. It's possible this is actually how people in this world, you know, in the addiction world and everything, it's how they actually live. I, I don't know because I have never lived in that, uh, in that, uh, level of delinquency, you know? Sure. Um, but it's watching how the kids band together to survive and they do life together and family, um, everybody, but the dad is all about, you know, keeping the family together and doing all this stuff. It's funny, but it's like very dark, funny, yeah. Um, but it's really interesting. I'm three seasons into it and I just started it. Gosh, last week. Oh gosh. Um, it's, a, it's definitely one of like 10 binge. episode seasons though, or what? No, I think they're, I think they're full seasons. I could be wrong, but, um, uh, well, 10 episode is a full season on like HBO, but yeah, I don't know. I, okay. it might, I think it's more than 10. It might, it might be 10. I'm not sure, but it's, um, it's a bit like you can definitely binge it. Like the story is is good um and and how that they uh, how they t- they try to tell it it's really something redeeming to about it like do you ha- do you have any positive takeaways or is it kind of like wow he was really awful man i'm glad that that's not how my life is okay so <laughs> like, essentially I, I you're mean, just watching a train wreck there, there is yeah there there is some redeeming stuff the redemption comes not from him but in the in the form of the children banding, like banding together. together and even though the yeah. kids are doing terrible like the kids steal to be able to live and they do terrible things. Like, I don't want to go into it, but like they do like anything that you can think of gets covered in this, in this, uh, sure. in this deal, like incest, uh, sex, uh, with a, with a minor, um, drinking and driving, letting a dry, uh, dry, uh, like a 10 year old drive a car, um, letting a kid take a rap for something that you did. 
uh, killing a relative and burying them, like things like that. Like, like it, it's really, really terrible what this family has to do to just to survive uh, um, in Chicago. Um, but it's it's the acting is great. Uh, you really buy into the characters after the first season, like you are bought into what they what they do and who they are and you hate some people and you love others and you root for some people and, and you root against others. It's, it's the way that it's written is really is well it, done. So. Is it going to be hard to imagine William H. Macy uh, sober? Y- yes. Yeah, absolutely. After this, like I, I don't understand how anybody has ever played a drunk before him or how anybody will ever play a drunk after him. He plays it perfectly. Like it's almost scary. So um, anyway, shameless, uh, if the kids are in bed, uh, give it a, give it a whirl. <laughs> um, but that's, that's uh, that was my plug. week. Patrick, take us home. Yes, absolutely. So big, oh, I, pu- I put these headphones, these other headphones in because at some point during this episode, I want to do speech jammer cause it's yeah. been too long. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to turn it on. I'll just do it for the rest of the time. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, we will, we have some iTunes reviews. We'll speech jam them. Perfect. That's a perfect way to do it, Patrick. Listen, solving problems all day. All right, so uh, another, uh, you know, fantastic not actually a week because record schedule is still not caught up since the holiday, which is fine when we're just blazing right on into another one. Uh, You know, it's... But what else would you rather do than talk to awesome people and have cool experiences? This week, because it's it's only been a a couple days since we talked last, um, I have... I'm late to the party is what's happening because I have now discovered Rocket League. And uh, you have now oh. discovered Rocket Leg Link. Rocket, yeah, you should I'm, turn this off. Off. Yeah, you should. Yep, there we go. Yeah, you should disable Rocket speech jammer right now. It is great, and so I'm I'm back on the switch now. I'll say this. Uh, right, it's a bit janky when you're trying to play with multiple people. It, it's I don't know if it's a switch issue or it's a Rocket League issue. Oh, I think it's a Rocket League switch? issue. Yes. Oh. But it has a. It'll like um. Not forget, but it won't maintain uh, controller orientation, which will mess you up because then, like, depending on which controller you have, you'll you'll lose some of your controls. Um, but then also, like, the game has crashed on me a couple times or um, a bad port. getting stuck in. Um, say it again. Just a bad port then. Yeah. So it's uh, it is it is 90 something percent there. But with multiplayer, with getting con- controllers to connect uh, reliably and and not. Uh, drop that and, and stay the orientation and, and be able to do what you need to do. Uh, it's it, it's a little wonky. So I would say if you're playing with multiple people, uh, give yourself plenty of time to get the match actually set up because uh, you're probably going to run into some problems. But once you're actually in the game, uh, the game is just a huge amount of fun. I want to show you one other thing before we go to uh, Master Categories because I don't want to have an hour-long Master Category. But a uh, couple cool things. Um talked about them plenty of times before, so I'm not going to go into detail, but did get another set of the Baron Fig, the Vanguards, uh, and then also a uh, Confidant. Uh, right. Yes, Confidant. I almost, I laughed because I thought I miss said Confident, and then realized I was right the first time. Uh, I do have, have a Confidant. You have been more Confident. You were not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so those are great. We've talked about them a lot on the show, but the thing that I am also new to, late to the party, is the Squire. So the Squire pin, it, oh, Come on, camera, focus for me. By the way, if you're listening right now and you're on uh, listening the audio version, check out the video version because everything that we're talking about right now—the shirts, the stickers, the this stuff from Baron Fig, the stuff in my master category—we're all showing it on video. This, this is the place to hang out. This is where you get the full experience. So, but anyway, the the um, the squire. So the squire is the pen the Baron Fig makes, and it comes in a uh, like cardboard two packaging. Packaging's uh, really really great the the reveal when you actually open the box and you just have like the pin sitting there it's just so exciting now this is the kickstarter edition so the kickstarter edition uh has this uh i don't know if i'm gonna get to focus but basically it's this light bulb right there on the i'll show it to you guys too yeah so the kickstarter edition so you'll notice that they release different squires uh like they have the one that has the ghost or the one that has like the uh, there's like the they have different symbols. One has the ABC and all that kind of stuff. But this is the Kickstarter edition, um, and you could get uh, and I think the same color as the back color. So I got wine, 
uh, which is going to tease what I'm going to talk about is later. But same, is, very, very excited ink to have color this. Is it? Go ahead. What's the ink color? Uh, I think the ink color is still black. I think the only you thing. You can choose that, the ink color that you choose black. Well, then I would have chosen black. I'm not going to choose. Yeah, it's black. I'm not going to choose something fancy. But this mechanism, by the way, like because when you first get it, there's probably a moment where you're not really sure what to do. You just turn like 45 degrees the top of the pin and it's uh, that drops the cartridge and, and raises it. Uh, very, very nice. But on that note, if you have a Squire and you want a nice way to hold it, they now have the stone. That's new on their website as well. And thinking, thinking about the sword and the stone, this being the sword, the stone being the holder, uh, it is this uh, really smooth, polished piece of aluminum that is shaped kind of like a stone, and the pin rests in it. So it's a really, really oh, nice cool. piece for your desk. So if you want to kind of dress up your desk area and also you want to display this really, really nice pin, then check out the stone. It's under the, the new product section on Baird Pick's website. But that is it. I'll save the rest for Master Categories, so why don't we go ahead and head that direction? Well, that's it for this portion of the show. Uh, you can find us on m one podcastcom with show notes and links to all the stuff that we've talked about so far. Um, and then make sure you check out the Master Category episode that comes up right after this. And uh, you can find us all over the web and social media. Just search m one podcast right? I mean, that's where we're at. Yeah. Search that and you'll find us. Yeah. Join the Slack community. It's a great opportunity for you to be with um, hundreds of other creatives day in and day out chatting about things that matter to you um, and talking about cool stuff, pop culture stuff, as well as day-to-day -day work stuff, um, bounce ideas and share work. It's a great place. You can also uh, like this and subscribe below or above or wherever it is on what you're watching this on. Subscribe to this uh, on YouTube and to iTunes and the Google Play Store and wherever it is that you're getting this. Um, subscribe, like it, share it. And uh, rate and review. Leave a comment, and it helps us out a ton. Hey, let me um, throw something in. For, uh, for those that are listening and that haven't subscribed to the show yet, uh, I want to encourage you. Community is something we talk about a lot on the show because that's something that we believe in very strongly. It's the reason that we talk about Slack so much. It's the reason we, we try to connect you with artists and, and connect you with their stuff. And we go out to events and meet you, and we do meetups and all that kind of stuff because we care about community. If you're listening – and you value community or you realize that it's an important piece and maybe it's a piece that you're missing, take the first step towards that community by subscribing to the show, subscribing on our platforms, jumping into Slack, start building that community. Uh, huge amount of opportunity on the other side of that. So if you know, you're an artist, you care about that, you're ready to get it started, that's, that's your next step. Yep. Uh, but for now, we're going to hop out of this piece of the episode. So uh, I'm Andrew. I'm Patrick. And I'm Luke. Peace out. Bye. Hold on to your butt. <laughs>